Hello again, here we are at Daily JavaScript, and uh, let's talk about functions again. And, you know, uh, functions are sort of the, you know, major building block of JavaScript. Maybe we'll make a function here called my function. And, you know, our function might do something. It might print a message to the console. Let's make this message, you know, hello world. There's your classic programming lesson and you know we might call on our function by calling its name okay there we go all done so you know we've got a function here you call the name with the parentheses on the end and uh, you know you've got the name of the function here and uh, and then it it runs the code right so we'll save it and we'll test it here and <clears throat> and it says you know hello world in the console right so that's working you know, sometimes, and this might sound a little odd, but sometimes you might want to have a function and have that function, you know, execute itself, right? In this case, I mean, you know, I'm kind of doing that. I'm just calling the function, but I could call it again. And a lot of times that's actually, you know, probably more often this is preferable, right? You know, I want to be able to call my function multiple times. Um, but in some cases, you'll want to have the function execute itself, right? So what we're going to do is this. We're going to make an anonymous function, right? So here is a function that doesn't have a name, right? And we're going to execute it by putting the parentheses on the end. Now, this doesn't work the way I've written it here, right? I get an error, right? And that's because JavaScript sees this as the definition for a, you know, for the the function like we're defining it and we're not allowed to execute the definition so what we need to do is we need to wrap the function definition in the parentheses and then that considers it to be a like a JavaScript statement or expression and you can execute an expression right so so I'll put the parentheses here around the whole function there and then I'll test it and you can see it said hello world right and this is a really interesting idea because we, we had this function here with code in it and the code ran, right, because we executed the function, right? And there's no name for this function. Nothing is connected to it. It's sort of a weird programming island, right? Um, so that seems, you know, kind of actually less useful than the first example, you know, on, on first look, right? But where this becomes useful is the fact that... Um, if you, the fact that defining, oops, I typed that wrong there. Um, if you're defining values inside of a function, those values are scoped to that function. In other words, this variable message right here is not accessible outside the function. So what's interesting about, about these self-executing functions is they give you a way to create a block of code that's completely isolated from the rest of the code in your program. And you can, you can define variables and other functions inside of here that are only accessible inside this, this block. And this block is not, you know, it doesn't have any name or there's no handle to it. So, you know, it's completely isolated, right? You know, so, you know, if I put var message in here, there's, there's no way for me to get to message out here. You know, like, how do I get to message? There's no object I can put in front. You know, I can't, I can't do that. Um, you know, it's completely, you know, it's completely locked inside there, right? And, and that's kind of nice because in JavaScript, we run into this problem where everything is global, right? Like all the objects and variables are global. So there's, there's some, there's always a way to get to some part of your program and then change something, right? And sometimes that's okay. And we want to do that. And a lot of times though, we don't want people to do that. We've written the software, we've written the, the program to do a specific thing. And, and if, if, if someone changes it outside and doesn't do it in the right way, then our, our system is broken, right? And in JavaScript, you know, it's easy to set the value of a variable. Nothing stops you from doing that, you know. So if you can access that variable, you can set it to anything, and you can set it to any type, too. So, you know, you might have a number, and then you accidentally set it to a string, and then all of a sudden you try and use the plus sign, and then it's, you know, concatenating values on the end rather than adding the numbers together, and then your program's not, not working properly, right? So, uh, so why, why is this good here? 
let's let's talk a little bit more about this, right? So so this is kind of interesting. What if you know I change this and I I don't want to just say console log. You know I want to have a function in here called uh, you know print or something, right? And the print function is going to uh, you know console log. Oops, that would be a mistake, right? And then it's going to send, it's going to log the message, right? And maybe we'll set our message to be, you know, hello world exclamation point, okay? And, uh, you know, we can call this print function from inside of our anonymous function. So we can say, you know, print right here and save that and then we'll test it. You know, it says hello world. So great, it's still working, right? You know, of course, we can't call print from out here. Right, so if I try and call print out here, it's not available. Oh, wait, I hit the, the print button by mistake there. Oh, actually, for you know what? It's I guess it's calling print. I forgot print is a function that tells the browser to print. But so I I I, I chose a bad name there. But you know we we can't. Let's call this uh, you know print message. Sorry, I, I goofed up there. Let's call that print message, and then let's try and call on print message down here, like this. And, uh, oh, wait a minute, print message is not defined, okay? So, you know, this is obviously not available out here. This is kind of locked, you know, inside of our function, right? So that's kind of interesting. Um, what else can we do here, right? Um, you know, maybe, you know, we need to access this, right? We need to access this thing from outside and tell it to print the message whenever we needed to print the message, but we don't want people to be able to tinker with print message or be able to change the message. Okay, so how about that situation? Well, in that situation, this function has to offer something or return something back that gives us a reference to what's happening in, in the interior, right? So what we would do maybe is something like this. You could say, you know, make an object here, right? And then maybe your object could have a property, you know, um, of, uh, I'll just call it talk, right? And then we'll say a function like this. And so, you know, we can call in this talk function, and the talk function might call print message, right? And, uh, and then now we need, a, we need a way to get to this talk thing, right? So maybe we'll do this. We'll say um, return object, right? So now our anonymous function defines an object inside. So this variable object is being returned, and that can be accessed from outside. So, you know, maybe I'll do this. I'll say, you know, the object here equals what is returned from the anonymous function, right, which is this object, and it has one method called talk, and talk, you know, calls print message, but this, this print message function and the variable message are not accessible outside of, of this anonymous function, right? So nobody can get to those, nobody can change them, nobody can tinker with them. You know, you can screw up talk, right? We could do things to talk, but we can't change, you know, what talk is going to do if we leave it alone, right? So let's let's give that a test. So I'll, I'll test my, uh, let's actually comment this out so it won't print the message immediately, right? So we'll save that and we'll refresh it here and nothing happens, right? And, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, so now that we've got this set up and it's returning a value to the object right here, you know, we can say the object, you know what, you have a method called talk. Why don't we call on that, right? And uh, now when I, when I test, I can get my message, right? And if I had other things going on there, you know, I could call talk, I could call talk again from the anonymous function here or from our object that came back from the anonymous function, right? And we could call talk any, any number of times, right? And there it is, right? So, um, so anyway, so there's a quick introduction to anonymous functions and why you might use them. You know, let's go over it again, right? So, uh, just to make sure that we we got it right. So, we define a function without a name, okay? And we wrap it in the parentheses, so it's got to have an opening parenthesis and a closing parenthesis encompassing the entire function. And then the function is going to self-execute. It's going to run itself, 
It's going to define it. So normally, you know, we define the function and then later we call on it, right, or, or execute it later on. Here, we're going to define it, and on the same line, we're going to call it by putting the, the open and close parentheses on the end again, okay? Inside of, a, of one of these anonymous functions, they call this a closure also, right? So inside this closure, right, it encloses, you know, a, a, a special or defines its own scope, right, or encloses its own variables or, or, or functions, right? And if you define variables with the keyword var or functions with the keyword function, those variables and functions only are accessible inside of the closure, Okay, so these, these two values here, message and print message, I said print message, right, but, uh, um, but anyway, you, you know, these two are only available inside here, right? So um, let's actually fix the spelling there, right? Okay, so, so these, you know, they can't be accessed from outside, they can't be changed, right? So there's no way for the code out here to tinker with, with what's going on inside the program as far as these two elements are concerned. Okay, if we want to pass values outside from the anonymous function so the rest of the world can talk to the interior, right, then we can create sort of a, a gatekeeper or, you know, um, kind of a controller to determine like how the, the, the world can interact with the interior, interior of our, our, you know, our closure here, right? And so we can do that, you know, there's a couple ways we could do that here with an object and then we could add properties and methods to that object and then return them, right? And there you go. And of course, like any, if the function returns a value, then we need to, you know, collect that value that it returns up here, right? Um, but anyway, so there we go. There's a, um, there's a quick introduction to anonymous functions and objects and all that stuff. Okay. Hopefully that's interesting and uh, you guys all have a great day. Thanks.